Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Um, how's it going this morning? And uh, we're good morning. We're uh, taping again ahead of time, so this is now into October. We're still in September, but we're um, taping into October the session. So uh, I'm sure everyone's starting to see cooler temperatures and. Uh, uh, beginning of fall us, and beautiful colors yeah yeah we'll be uh in colorado uh the neat thing about colorado is because you know there's so much uh mountain um colors start up at the very what they call the high country mm-hmm. um at about you know uh maybe the second into the third week of september and right. um, and you guys get the bright yellow from the aspens mostly right? we get we get bright yellow and and some bright oranges we don't we don't have uh you know there's obviously spots where there's you know uh, deciduous trees but primarily in colorado we don't get what you guys get because you get so many Those different vari- reds varieties also, you get yeah. you get you get all the di- different colors um and it's so beautiful but for us um because it starts in the high country uh that the colors move down uh, week after mm-hmm. week after week so that it starts mid-September. By the time it gets down to Denver, it's usually about the first or second week of November. So mm-hmm. we've got about two oh, months. Oh, wow. So you've got a long transition time. We've got a long two two months of color uh, that you just go to a different spot and then can you know see the beautiful, magnificent, mm-hmm. what they call peak color. Uh, so by the time it's, you know, like in October, uh, there's pre- peak color down the mountain, uh, headed down the mountain. At the very top, those leaves are already gone. Uh, right, right. So it's just a matter of following it down. So we love we love the fall, uh, the colors, and uh, the weather's always good here in Colorado. So it's it's not cold, and it's, uh, you know, it's it's kind of crisp, but mm-hmm. it's, it's uh, kind of fun. and Crisp, yeah. Yeah, so we, uh, we enjoy it. And then, of course, we get to go to New Hampshire and experience your fall every year because it's so beautiful yeah uh, and magnificent we'll that, see you guys out that. there again for a yep. retreat this year yeah so looking forward to that yeah um so we've been talking about uh again uh, keys to the supernatural to receive it uh you know last time we talked about uh jesus's statement about the kingdom is it happens in the kingdom you know walk with me in the kingdom let me be king um, and as you have a heart to do and stay with me which is what the disciples did uh, they learned it uh, because mm-hmm. the the one good thing they did is, in a sense, they stayed in the kingdom because they kept following Jesus and let him lead them day after day, week after week to situations where he could demonstrate the supernatural as they learned the power of that and the authority mm-hmm. of that and the beauty of that to where they they understood it after three years it was now normal as opposed to, I don't even know what you're talking about uh, when they first started, mm. you know? So right. uh, God wants us to do that. Well, this next story, we've we've hit on this before and I just want to hit a particular aspect of it. Uh, this is in uh, uh, Luke 8, uh, verses 40 to 52. Uh, this is a story we've talked about a little sure. bit and we're going to hit a couple of a, a key aspects about it. Luke 8, 40 to 52. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, who was ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman having flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? 
But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now, when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, do not be afraid. Only believe and she will be made well. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James and John and the father and mother of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her, but he said, do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. Uh, keep going all the way down to um, uh, 50, 56, sorry. Okay. Um, and then, and they ridiculed him knowing that she was dead, but he put them all outside, took her by the hand and called saying, little girl, arise. Then her spirit returned and she arose immediately and he commanded that she be given something to eat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened. Yeah. Uh, so we've talked about, uh, and we spent quite a bit of time already uh, with the woman, you know, who uh, had the issue of blood is she went after touching the hem of his garment. And we mm -hmm. went through a pretty good discussion of that, of she understood that their statements that were made that uh, even to Moses is that um, I want you to, to have, and these were in essence prayer shawls with tassels, is right. um, reminding the people that God's will is best and none better and to surrender your will to his because he'll do supernatural things. And then in other places in, in scripture, it said Christ will come with healing in his wings. And the word wings is the hem of his garment, is that that's where mm -hmm. it is. So she understood that. And she says, if I can just touch it, I'm going to get healed. And she works, she goes after it, touches it, power goes out for him. And, and then he says to her, your faith is what has made you well. Um, so yes. what he would have saying is it wasn't magical that you just touched the hem of my garment, but it's you, but you believe you knew something about it and you mm -hmm. expected and believed that the power was in me. And if you could grab hold mm -hmm. of that power, you would be, you would be healed. He said, so your belief and your understanding mm -hmm. of that is what draws the power. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't just, it wasn't because anybody could touch my garment. It was because you, you knew something about it and power went out for me. Okay. And then, uh, so we, and we talked about that, but then, um, the, uh, the people from the synagogue, the ruler of the synagogue's house says, Hey, your daughter's dead. Um, and mm -hmm. the, and in verse 49, what do they say to Jesus? Your daughter is dead. Uh, what do they don't say? Don't even go trouble the teacher. Well, don't yeah. even bother. Yeah. In, in essence, don't bother anymore. This mm -hmm. circumstance is over. It's done. It's completed. There's no hope for it. You got to just accept it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, ain't going to happen. Uh, and Jesus says, uh, no, don't be afraid. Only believe. Um, so even when it appears well, this ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. um, I can't see any way out of this one. It appears to me that I'm just going to get stuck with this adversity or with this problem or this thing that I can't overcome. I guess that's it. And Jesus says, don't be afraid. And what he's saying there is keep coming. Don't be afraid and shut it off. And, and be willing to go to faith and let me speak to it. And I've got more to say about this. Don't accept mm -hmm. it as being over or what I say, accept mediocrity that, well, I guess that's it. Um, no, uh, don't be afraid, keep coming and, and, and walk into belief and be willing to walk into belief. And, and so he comes, uh, he lets you know, Peter, James, John, the father and mother go in uh, he said, she's not dead. Don't worry. Um, she's going to mm -hmm. come back to life. Um, and the rest of them in verse 40, 40, 53, what'd they say? 
and they ridiculed him knowing that she was dead. Yeah, they and the word ridicule is is we're challenging you to mm-hmm. say what you're saying doesn't make any sense and isn't true. And so really you're lying and deceiving and what you're saying is only going to add more pain and we ask you to ridicule is stop doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to try to shame you into stopping. Right. Um, and so uh, uh, ridicule uh, mm-hmm. is one, uh, and, he, and he's basically illustrated two points here. One, um, I've already given up on this circumstance. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't bother f- looking at it anymore. It's done. It's over with. Can't happen. Nothing can change. Um, so that's it. Two is if you say there's more to go, actually, I say, no, there's not. And I'm going to say to you, you're foolish for continuing to pursue this. And Mm -hmm. you should just accept it. You'd be better off accepting it than to keep going. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm going to challenge you about your thought process and basically say you're kind of absurd what you're doing. Uh, and stop it. Okay, so um, Jesus heard that. In verse 54, what did he do? He put them all outside. (laughs) Uh, He put them all outside. Uh, Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, He said, um, I've drawn a line, and it's really simple. Um, He said, forget about circumstances. Mm -hmm. Forget about what has happened. Forget about your experience with what has happened. Do you have a heart to be in the room with me mm. to learn what I'm going to show you? I haven't, right. sh- I haven't shown you anything yet, but you have to choose. Do you just have a heart to be in the room with me with a, with a mm-hmm. willingness to see, experience, believe what I'm about ready to do, or at least reveal to right. you what the truth is? Um, or have you already decided? Mm-hmm. And if you just des- resigned yourself to something else, I've, I've gone to resignation and I'm not willing to, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. I'm actually speaking against this. Mm-hmm. And he said, okay, if that's where you stand, you got to get out of the room. Um, mm-hmm. in the room, he said, I don't need full faith. I just need the willingness to receive faith. Right. And keep and keep learning what I have to say, including, which by the way, I've already said something. She, she's not dead yet. She's not dead, right? Uh, it, she appears dead, but life is different than you think, and I can bring her back to life. Um, so, I've already said something. I just want you to pursue further what I've already said. Now, by the way, um, and 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 we experienced this, you know, with Michelle, is that uh, no. She's coming home. I mean, that was his answer. And mm-hmm. um, and there's a moment where all of us have that same answer, by the way. Um, right. Is that it's time to go. Um, so we're not going to get healed. Uh, so it's not about um, I have to make sure that I do the right things for him to do it. It's just that I have a heart to receive what he has to say about it um, mm-hmm. and not prejudge it up front with, I've already gone to resignation and ain't nothing's going to happen or I'm even speaking against it. Um, okay. Now right. here's the import impact of all this. Um, we've learned it. Um, you and Dan, Linda and I, uh, our, our leaders is, um, we all, uh, serve as each other's uh, pieces of our, what we call our inner circle. Are, are we in our spouse or a circle? We and people in our family are a circle. We in our small group is a circle. Mm -hmm. We as our leaders are a circle, inner circle. And um, we've all been around situations where um, we're inviting uh, those people into the room with us. Uh, The reason we invite them into the room is that there's never any ridicule and there's never any resignation. Um, right. It's the uh, heart of everyone in the room is to hear God's will. Yeah, yeah, and it's right? not, it's to not, seek and surrender to that. Yeah, and, and it's not about 
uh, we're going to we're going to say enough things to make you believe that it's going to happen. We're truly going to seek God together, but we're not opposed. And no matter how severe things are, we're not mm-hmm. here to just say, "Well, I guess that's it." It's well, let's keep right. going. Let's keep going together. And so we have people around us that help carry us into that discussion mm-hmm. uh, with God, um, and it's encouraging. Because when you're in the middle of it, particularly when it's hard or when it's really difficult or it just seems like nothing is happening or it hasn't happened or even gone south on me, uh, that's when the inner circle says, hey, I understand. Uh, But hey, let's keep going and let's keep asking God and let's keep listening. Uh, We know that God has a resolution to it. Uh, Stay with it. I'll stay with you. You stay with it. Let's go. And it encourages Mm -hmm. you to keep going. Um, On the other side of it is, um, uh, and this is particularly true when people are just starting out, Uh, they have a heart to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know what? I would like to learn this um, and I'm not opposed to it. Okay. But they have friends around them that actually ridicule them. Mm -hmm. uh, That God doesn't do supernatural stuff. Uh, You can't expect it. Um, uh, the gifts are over, you know, dispensationalism, uh, it doesn't work this way. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're doing a, a, a hopeless exercise. You're only going to make yourself more miserable, uh, if you keep pursuing mm-hmm. this thing. And, um, I don't see it happening and I would encourage you not to waste your time, you know, doing this. Right. And there's people actually say that and speak to them. Um, when I experience that with people, I say, okay, now, Uh, Because, and I take them to these verses, I say, God is asking you, do you have a heart to go? And and let me just ask you that simply. Do you have a heart to go? Yes. Okay. Okay. If you're going to go, you're going to have to put out unbelief. Mm -hmm. And the people that are coming against that or don't have a heart at all or have gone to complete resignation, then don't include them in, in your process. And on the other side of it, is um, let me help you start to gather a inner circle that does have a heart to go. Right. Um, and, and there's an important difference there between, um, which I know everyone understands, but I just want to reiterate, between you're not gathering yes men around you who are only telling you what you want to hear. That's not who we're saying put out of the room anybody who's not saying yes to what you want to hear. You're gathering people around you who are willing to seek God together and desire to hear his will above all else and help you step into that. That's different than a yes man. Right. Yeah. And and explain the difference again so it's clear. Uh, what is the difference? A, a yes man is somebody who literally will come around and let's say I tell everybody I would love to go jump off a building and just flap my wings and see if God will save me. <laughs> And, and I hear several people saying, that's not good, good idea. That's not going to go well for you, whatever. And then I have this group that says, oh yes, do it. God can do it. And so I kick everybody out of the room who says no. And I keep everybody who says yes. And I go jump off a building. Yeah. That's not going to go so (laughs) well for me. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Instead, I gather a group of people who will in purity of heart say, Hey, let's go see what God really says about this. Let's go to the word. Let's pray and seek his wisdom and see what he says for you to do. Yeah. That's who I want in the room. Those who believe he will speak, he will answer and he will lead and guide us into his best and none better. Yeah. Not those who simply want to rubber stamp what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And the, uh, and see the the neat thing is that it can be fairly easy with because of the material that we provided is that um, you know we have online courses so that um, if you're just learning this um, first of all you can say to uh, people around you hey I'd like to learn what it means to abide and hear God's voice you know would you be willing to do that with me um, mm-hmm. it's pretty simple uh, and they can say you know yeah or an eh no, you know, you can't hear God's voice, you know, so it'll sort itself out. But the people say, yeah, I'd like, a, I'd, I'd be kind of willing to do that. Well, then start to go through that. And then mm-hmm. uh, particularly as you go into the supernatural, we have a course on the supernatural is to say to people, um, 
we'd like to learn this or we've got a situation that mm -hmm. we'd like to apply this to, would you be willing to join us to learn this with us? And see, it's it's a heart mm. thing. It's a heart thing. That's good. And um, either they say, "Yeah, I really kind of would." They don't have to know anything about it. And again, just keep right. keep thinking the beautiful life of the disciples. When Jesus <laughs> said, "Come and follow mm -hmm. me," they knew nothing, zero, right. about about the supernatural. They didn't know anything about it. Um, and all he said is, "Are you willing to come follow me?" He said, "The kingdom is here. Let's go into the kingdom." They said, yep, mm -hmm. we're willing. It took them three years to learn it. Right. And the good, the good thing is they stayed with them, see? Because they had a heart to, they really had a heart to learn it. Uh, and so um, it's really that simple is, uh, one, if you already know people are opposing this process, then I would just stop inviting them into the process. Right. Uh, you don't have to reject them as people. You just don't invite them into that process. Um, right. But now you need to have people around you that begin to say, I'd like to learn this with you. Mm -hmm. And you can do it with the courses. You know, you can have them listen to the podcast. You can practice it. You can email us. Um, we can assist you. There's There's all kinds of things that we can do. And all you're trying to do in the room the room meaning as you're processing real stuff mm -hmm. in your life that God cares about is gather people. And it's important to gather people and think about Jesus here in this story. Um, he had no trouble <laughs> believing mm -hmm. that she's, she's going to be alive. I, I know that. I know right. that father said she's going to be alive and no problem. Now what he could have done is just say, okay, everybody out. I'll just raise her from the dead and, and it'll be done. Um, but remember what he's trying to do is build fellowship in the process. Mm -hmm. So, okay, mom and dad, right. you, you have a heart to believe. Peter, James, John, you have a heart to believe. Come on in. Um, mm -hmm. Let's together with the heart to pursue faith, let me demonstrate something to you because you have a heart. Everybody else, you're out. I got to get you out of the room. Right. Uh, so all you need is a heart of people that have a heart to learn it, not that they're perfect in faith um, or even believing that this is going to happen. It's just, yeah, I'm will, I'm willing to do it, you know, and are they willing? Yeah. Yes, uh, I love that. But, but it's critical. And I believe because of the beautiful life of the body and the fellowship of the body, I don't think God wants all of any of us to do this by yourself um, is mm -hmm. I want to gather some people with you that begin to learn this together. Cause as you learn it together, the power will be greater and your witness will mm -hmm. be greater and it'll be easier to reinforce each other to stay with it. Um, and not, right. and not walk Absolutely. away, not walk away from it. So, um, we, we can't, we can't urge you enough to, um, get people of, of hard, uh, and opposition and ridicule, uh, resignation, get them out of the room. Don't process with them. But, I would say pray for, and we'll help you. We can help you with this because we have people all over the country mm -hmm. uh, to get some people that have a heart to join you in the process right. to learn what it means to experience the supernatural. And as you do, God will reinforce it together and then it'll reinforce it for you as you go downstream. And you and Dan and Linda and I, we still need that inner circle to keep encouraging us as, Absolutely. hey, stay in there. Surrender your will. Let, mm -hmm. you know, hey, it's not over yet. Story's not over. It's uh, a beautiful gift. It, yeah. re it really is. So, uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the admonition uh, to get unbelief out of the room, uh, skepticism out of the room, resignation out of the room, and to invite into the room uh, those that have a heart to learn it. They don't have to have perfect faith. They don't even have to experience it. They just have to have, have a desire to learn what it means to experience it. And so we just pray that we'll start to build our inner circle, which will reinforce for us the experience of supernatural, the sharing of the supernatural, and the encouragement to all of us that you're at work in a great and mighty way. And so we lift that up and pray that our, our communities will get stronger and stronger and stronger in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Rich. Such a good word today. And thank you for joining us, everyone. If you have any questions, send them in to questions at afjministry.com and we'd love to talk about it.
Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Yep, We'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.